Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna have a look at a, um, a storage box you probably know these this is um, well it's kind of a cradle for uh, putting in a hard drive you um, have some connections on the back this one has a USB 3 connection here it has an on off switch and it has a power plug and I have the um, have the adapter right here so uh, and this is fairly simple you um, you put a hard drive in there and you plug it into your computer and then the computer can see your hard drive but I have a new one and it's kind of special and uh, today I have to thank my patrons for this one because even though this looks very similar it's close to five ten times as expensive as the other one even though this one has uh, room for two hard drives and I believe this one only has room for one hard drive this one is way more expensive because it has a little special feature um, this one is for SATA hard drive and that's the normal thing and this one says SAS on the package here and this makes it very rare and rather expensive so yeah um, patrons supported me in this if you're a patron I would therefore remind you that I post a video every Sunday a special patron video on patreon where I'm telling you what I've been doing this last week so I would very much encourage you to go watch that because I can see that the numbers doesn't add up so uh, patrons remember to watch the patreon videos thank you um, so let's unbox this and see if it works with SAS hard drives otherwise I was screwed <laughs> and today's table is a uh, Hewlett Packard DL380 generation 9 very fancy table <laughs> bit high tech um, so why would you need a, a hard drive docking station for SAS well I just happen to have a lot of these SAS drives that has come out of professional systems and um, enterprise system and if you look at the connector here there is no uh, slot between the power connector and the signal connector and I have a um, I have a SATA connector in, in comparison you see the top one up here that's a SATA connector and this one is a SAS connector and that means that means that it cannot go into this slot so if I take my my SAS drive here and try to put it in here uh, it, it sounds like it goes in but it does not but if I take the SATA hard drive there it goes in and um, plus it's different system so even if it would go in uh, if I could remove that thing I don't think it would work I am um, I haven't tried I must admit that would be a nice ninja trick but that's where this one comes in it should be able to do that trick this is not sponsored there's not a lot of brands that makes these but I will make sure to leave some affiliate links in the description so that we can recuperate some of the money that we spend on this um, it comes uh, right off the slow boat from China and there is a lot of specification here it says that it has uh, USB 3.0 interface I hope that's correct that will do a lot for the speed for us and uh, yeah but let's let's get this out of the plastic this was waiting for me when I got home from vacation so I have been waiting for this for quite a while so let's see we have the cable power supply with European plugs that's nice and we have the docking station and we have some very very tiny manual here uh, mostly in Chinese oh, oh there is some English there too cool so I unwrapped everything and uh, yeah this is the box mm, Inmet Inmem I don't know if I'm saying that right but on the back we have a USB 3 connection we have a power connector and we have an on off switch 
And if we look down here, can we see that? We might have to put it upside down. We can see that we can put a SAS connector in there. So let's try that. SAS drive. And it needs to go in that way. And it goes in. Cool. I don't think uh, we can we can talk much more about this before we have to uh, connect it to a PC and see what happens. I'm expecting that uh, this is a walk in the park. We connect that and we have a uh, big hard drive on our computer. So if I have to whine about something, this cable is not very long. It's gonna be a problem to get that power from somewhere meaningful and close enough. Uh, yeah, we'll manage. So as a Lenovo fanboy, I have a tiny little Lenovo machine over here. It's the Think Center M75Q. This is a tiny AMD machine. And um, well, every time you have to mess with a, uh, with a SAS drive, you normally have to break out a server and well, connect it to a server because you need the, the RAID controller or the HPA to handle that SAS. And um, I, I wanted this to be an easier solution so that I could take a hard drive and connect it to my little machine here. Let's plug this in. That goes in that way. And we also have the power connector here, uh, which isn't that long. So uh, yeah, we're kind of limited there. Plug that in. Uh, so that would be really smart to have this and be able to manage uh, hard drives without having a big noisy server using a lot of power for days if I want to test this. I don't know if there's any smart electronic in this that will inhibit me to, uh, to check out hard drives, but at least I'll be able to put data on the drives and probably check if they're any good or if they're uh, dodgy as heck as I usually call it. So uh, let's try and pop this in and see if the Windows machine here says pling. And it says nothing. We probably need to turn it on first. Lights, come on. No plingity pling as of yet. So let's try. I took one of the drives that has tested okay. So. Uh, and it spins up. Bling bling. Bling bling. So we should be able to, let's just take disk manager. See, we have test six, which was not there before. So that's the 10 terabyte, uh, which this is. So it works without any problems. I wasn't expecting any problem either, but uh, yeah, that's always nice to see. Let's check the device manager, disk drives. It seems that it sees the box and not the drive. So let's, I'm gonna try and shut the box off. Oops, this is the internal NVMe. Then there is a general uh, that's my, my card reader for when I'm emptying out my SD cards properly. Uh, so when I turn it on again, we get that last one. I thought it would be this one that would be the... And it checks out the drive. It will pop up here in a second, I'm guessing. There. That's the one that we uh, that we're getting when we're turning the box on. Okay, that's an interesting information that um, right now we have the quick removal and we can select better performance, enable write cache in Windows, but you must use the safely remove hardware notification, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's so that uh, you don't remove the hard drive while it's being written to. Interesting. If we do that, we probably also get the cache down here. Enable write cache. Yes, so that would also give us some more performance. So, but for now, let's keep it there just to be... Uh, I don't have anything on it, but yeah. 
Okay, that's all good and fun. Uh, storage controller uh, doesn't show up there. So I have um, I have installed the uh, HD Tune Pro here, um, a trial version. <laughs> I can make another trial on this machine. And as this is USB 3, it should be able to outperform the hard drive in there. Um, but of course, who knows if that's gonna happen. So generic external, I only have one of those. So let's try and run that test. See what happens if it performs. It most definitely does not perform very well. Am I connecting this to a USB 3 on the machine or is that front one a USB 2? And that spike is probably because this hard drive is probably not 100%. It has just, it's not terrible either. But you can kind of see here, we are running about 40 megabytes per second. Ah, that could be better. So that was kind of horrible performance. Uh, this drive should be able to do at least 230 megabytes per second. So something is not as it should be. Meh. I switched to one of the ports of the on the back of the computer and it's the same thing. So also very poor performance there. So I'm just checking this. Uh, this is my my regular USB key that I walk around with and it's uh, it's doing a hundred megabytes per second. So uh, yeah. Nothing wrong with the port. So we did have this option to get better performance. So I think we will have to try that. We're we gonna give it, okay. Eh, really? No. Hmm. Bollocks. Let's see if that did anything. That gives us the very high performance of about 43, 44 megabytes per second, uh, which is still ever so slightly disappointing. So even though it's horribly slow, this one actually shows up. I have uh, quite a few of these and uh, when I pop them in, it will show up, but it will have, it won't recognize the partition on there and I have put a partition on all of them to test them out. And if I try to initialize the drive, it just gives me an uh, IO error. So it's not communicating with these drives, which is really irritating, but it could be the drive that is messing with me. So let's turn this off again. And I have a, um, I have a two and a half inch SSD that I wanna try and put in here. So that goes in like that. It's a bit thicker than the normal ones. That. Let's see how that goes. That popped up in here. 300 gigabytes. Let's see if we can test that. There. Then we have our generic external 300 gigabyte. And it seems that we have the same 43-ish megabytes per second. From an SSD. Yep. Which very much point a picture that it's the box that is the limit. Yeah, that ended out being the same awful performance. Let's just make sure that my NVMe drive in here tests better than 45 megabytes per second. It does, but yeah, that is actually also awful. Okay, yeah, that was an awful start, but then it came up there and did way better at the end of it. So weird as heck, but uh, 
Yeah, it did perform. We did see some good performance out of it. 1.5 gigabytes per second is, is acceptable. So just to make sure that, um, that it isn't my little computer that is messing up with me, I have uh, connected it to my laptop here. And I'm seeing even more horrible numbers over here. Now we are less than 40 megabytes per second. Yeah, we are down to about 37 megabytes per second here. Eh. Yeah, even more awful. Eh. So in desperation, I've tried another cable, which uh, clearly makes no difference whatsoever. So here is one of the 10 terabyte SAS drives that checks out fine on the server. And up here, uh, disk manager is not recognized. And if we uh, start it over here on uh, HD tune, there, it will uh, shortly give us a, an error message that it's not cooperating with us. It takes a bit there. We have a read error. And if we go down here and we ask it to initialize the disk here, there it sees the drive and we can DPT it and okay, it will give us the circle for quite a bit. And then it will also come and say that there's eh. Oh, that's almost out of view, but yeah, you see it down here. Eh. Could not. So that is not working. So I have been looking in the manual if they um, if they have some kind of firmware and I went to their website and found the product and they don't have any firmware on there either or drivers or anything. So I um, have another thing I want to try. This is a two and a half inch spinning drive Hitachi disk, which is also a SAS drive. So uh, I thought we should just try and pop that in and see. If, if that shows up. I haven't tried this one in anything before, so that would be interesting. I think it comes out of a Dell EMC box, and I do not remember if it works or if it doesn't work. Or... And, and this drive does not work. I don't hear it. It should be a 10,000 RPM. Oh, now I hear it. Doesn't sound too good. Well, there it is. A 600 gigabyte drive. Okay, I thought it would be a 300 gigabyte. But it, so, that works fairly well. So we could try and clear that. Let's do disk part. Disk part. Yes, yes. Oh, that's very small. Can you see that? We'll zoom in on that. <laughs> there we are. Let's list. List disk. We get our two disks. So number one, oh, number zero is my operating system. Don't want to delete that, but disk one. So select. Disk one. And disk one is selected and then I can clean. And when I do that, we will also see that everything goes away up here. Clean. There, everything's gone. Now we can initialize disk. There, it's very happy about that. Okay, well we can make a new simple volume here. Do something. Something. Okay, that part is oh, formatting. It's doing a quick format. It won't take long. Okay, this didn't go as planned. I, uh, I thought that this was uh, this was formatting, but it took forever and ever, and it turns out that it has stopped working. It's uh, it's not spinning anymore. Uh, it was spinning at some point, but right now it's not spinning, even though it's in. So, uh, yeah, uh, it's pfft. no good. This drive had come out of a 
a storage thing that so it was suspicious so um, yeah we'll put it to the side but I have a replacement for it so I want to see if this is better so let's get that out of hand but this one is wrapped so there. so let's try and pop that in let's turn the box off first and pop it in turn it on I do not hear it spinning. So we better make a conclusion on this. Uh, 43 megabytes per second is very slow for if you want to fill up a uh, 10 terabyte hard drive, which I really wanted to. So um, yeah, that's kind of irritating. So let's have that out of the way. It, um, it did this hard drive just fine. This one is it's a 10 terabyte and here we have uh, another 10 terabyte those worked just great no problem these uh two and a half inch 600 gigabyte did not want to work the first one spinned up and didn't format but uh yeah and then they just stopped working altogether uh on on the box at least uh, these hard drives 10 terabytes which I have a bunch of and was really the main purpose of getting this box and it did not work so it go up here non working then I have also tried some other ones this is a 3 terabyte works just great and this one is um, much like the other ones but this one is a 12 terabyte works just great so and I did another one also, and that also just worked fine. It was much like this one, but I believe it was a four terabyte. So, eh. Oh, and there was the 300 gigabyte SSD. Worked just fine. Would I recommend getting this? Well, you check out the link in the description, and I would say no. This is probably too expensive. You can go and see how much it actually costs. And I had too many issues, uh, so I wouldn't know if the if the box was the issue or the hard drive was the issue. Some of the hard drive worked, but some of them, well, the, like the white ones, were just weird. So I didn't like that. Well, they showed up, but there was other weird issues, and I'm not sure if it's the box. But normally, if I put them in a server, they don't do like that. And also these drives, if I put those in a server, I'm pretty sure they would behave just like normal. So the box is doing something. What it has going for it, going directly to USB, so you can plug it into a normal computer. That was what it had going for it. It's too slow and I didn't like that. 45 megabytes per second. Eh. So uh, yeah, I'm not gonna recommend it, but do check out the price in the link in the description maybe after this video telling you how much of a piece of junk it is the price might go down so that it isn't that horrible <laughs> but well you never know uh, thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so you can see me again and have a really nice day bye bye